Please from the back bench is James Weil. James. Thank you very much, Mr. Davies. And I join in congratulating my honourable friend for securing this debate and the great work that he does with the honourable member for Cambridge and chairing the APPG. I want to begin by also marking the 70th anniversary of the terrible floods that took lives in my constituency in Hunstanton, Heacham, Snettersham and Kingsland and along the East Coast. And as we've heard, the East of England is a driver of growth and one of the only three regions that are net contributors to the Exchequer. But the full potential of our region is being held back by barriers including skills, connectivity, housing and other issues. Now I'm fortunate to represent one of the most attractive constituencies in the country. However, it's also a priority one levelling up area due to the deprivation in certain parts as there are in other areas of Norfolk and across the East. So levelling up is as relevant in northwest Norfolk as it is anywhere in the country. And for me, that's about spreading opportunity, which starts with education. And the paper from the APPG highlights the challenge in meeting the 2030 reading, writing and maths targets. This mission is essential to giving young people the best opportunity to realise their potential. And much will depend on the white paper's parent pledge to deliver this and supporting teacher, teachers to deliver the improvements. And giving children the best environment to learn in is also important, and I welcome the inclusion of Smithton High School and King Edward VII Academy, of which I'm a governor, in the school rebuilding programme to give young people the best facilities. But I know from my weekly visits to schools across the constituency that they continue to face significant issues despite the additional £4.6 million billion pounds the government has committed to. And as my honourable friend has highlighted, the funding formula doesn't work effectively for rural schools currently. And that issue is particularly the case with special educational needs, which was raised with me by the head of St Martha's Catholic Primary School only a week ago, and there's much anticipation at the forthcoming government response to the consultation on SEND to ensure provision can meet the growing demand that we see. Now, this is a timely debate coming a week after the latest round of the levelling up fund, and I'm very grateful to the Minister that the £24 million bid submitted by Norfolk County Council to transform the 15th century Southgate entrance to Kingsland has been successful. This will do a lot to promote growth, to improve transport links, protect the heritage and also improve air quality. And that comes after the success of the £25 million town deal for Kingsland to boost projects to, for skills, jobs, regeneration. And my honourable friend for Clacton will be interested to know the project to uh, restore St George's Guildhall, the oldest continuing working theatre in the country and the only one that can credibly claim that Shakespeare actually performed there. So that is £49 million of investment in a priority one levelling up area, underlining the government's commitment to North West Norfolk and to working with Conservative leaders Stuart Dark and Andrew Proctor to spread opportunity in our area. Many of the issues facing my constituents and businesses come down to connectivity, and digital connectivity is crucial here. And due to the geography of this rural area, Norfolk lags other areas in mobile and broadband, which is why I pressed for Norfolk to be included in the early phase of Project Gigabit and contracts worth over £100 million to connect 86,000 premises are due to be awarded in May, which could cover up to 8,000 premises in my own constituency, making a real difference to growth and productivity. Now, turning to rail, I want to highlight once again the importance of upgrading Ely Junction, as others have, and it bears repeating, because this project is backed by MPs across the east of England precisely because it will deliver a major boost in capacity, up to 30%, enabling more passenger services to my constituency, but supporting freight and supporting Freeport East and delivering a major boost to growth for our area, but for the country. And that's the case regardless of the damage that the unions are currently doing with their strike action. And the business case by Network Rail demonstrates a benefit-cost ratio of nearly £5 for every pound invested. That compares very favourably with any other rail project. So I hope very much that this project will proceed in the next Rail Network's Enhancements Pipeline update. It's not that easy to say. Um, in terms of the roads, which a number of colleagues have commented on, my constituents want to see the A47 jewelled, and the next investment round should include the Tilney to East Winch scheme that's been prioritised by Transport East, which comes on top of six schemes which are currently underway in the RIS 2 process. And the A10 West Winch Housing Access Road is desperately needed to unlock, as the name suggests, housing in a growth area, and work is continuing on the next phase of the business case for that. We need to have the infrastructure alongside the affordable homes that people desperately need. 
Finally, the APPG report highlights low confidence regarding the mission on health and life expectancy. This is, of course, a vital issue. And North West Norfolk has many of those coastal areas that the Chief Medical Officer has highlighted as some of the worst health outcomes. Now, people living in those areas are served by the Queen Elizabeth Hospital in Kings Lynn. And this hospital has nearly 3,400 steel and timber supports holding up this cracking concrete roof, and it desperately needs to be replaced. And the new hospital program offers a once-in-a-generation opportunity to transform the QEH to deliver modern, fit-for-purpose facilities and to support people to live healthier lives. And the Health Secretary has stated that dealing with rack hospitals is his priority, and I welcome the focus that he's brought to solving this problem. And so I call on the government to give the certainty to my constituents, patients and staff, that the QEH will be rebuilt by 2030. And in conclusion, the report and the debate shows progress is good in some areas, but greater focus is needed elsewhere to realise the huge potential of the east of England and meet these cross-cutting missions and our shared ambition to level up.